Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to your Montgomery County update. Uh, today is uh, February 22nd. We are in the doldrums of February here. Um, actually saw today that we're actually going to see mid-40s this week. So snowmobilers, they got it, what, today's probably the last couple yeah, days. There's a lot of snow out there, but it's, it's 45 and rain is a yeah. problem. Yeah. I see um, you guys have been doing some patrols, and, and yes. that's been going real well. Yeah, they've been out consistently, and the clubs really appreciate that. Yeah, and I, from what I hear, the clubs have done a great job grooming the trails, yeah. and especially the, um, uh, the Canalway Trail. There's been a ton of people from outside our county here, which I think is a win-win for all of us. Well, that's what we've been uh, trying to do and promote. And yeah. Um, yeah, thank you to all the snowmobile clubs for all their work. Glad everybody's having a good time. It's nice to see, even though the winter is we're getting towards the tail end, but it's nice to see some warmer temps in the forecast. So um, without further ado, we'll get into uh, some of our numbers and uh, what's going on. Uh, more good news to report on the uh, COVID front as far as you know our numbers. We were at, for this past week, 107 cases, which is down again. Last week we were at 138. The previous week we were at uh, 150. And actually I was just looking at some, some older numbers and uh, going back to the beginning of January, we actually had 393 cases in one week. So um, the, the trend is the right direction. I did an interview with Channel 13 yesterday and uh, you know they were asking about the, the positivity rate is still a little higher and what I thought might indicate that. But my message to them was, you know, we're still trending in the direction that the rest of the state is going and um, it's still lower than it was. And I'm, I feel very good about it. I mean, uh, you know, from what you're seeing, you know, uh, you know, would you would you say the same? I agree. I think um, you know the past couple of weeks we have not has had as many positive cases. Um, people would say, well, that would have to do with testing, or that would have to do with other things. But the number of tests continue to rise. Um, it, it's the rate of of positivity that's going down. So I'm very pleased. Um, I'm very pleased that school sports are are not impacting our numbers. They have been able to stay open and, and maintain. Um, I'm very pleased with our school districts being able to stay open even after a break. Um, you know, overall, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Me too. And I mean, even just to put it in perspective, in the last three weeks, we've had um, 395 cases, and there was one week in January where we had 393. Yeah. So that's a good, just give you, you know, we step back and take a look at it. Um, we're certainly in a much better place. And I would echo what you've said. Um, uh, kudos to the superintendents for uh, the great job they've done with sports. I know that, you know, just to see the reaction on how much that meant to these kids, um, you know, and, and we're gonna try to continue that moving forward. There's been talks about football. Obviously my heart breaks for wrestling. I know that was, um, you know, it, it was a challenge. There was no doubt about it. Um, and, uh, but um, you know, they're gonna try to do the best they can. And in addition to that, it's obviously not just about sports, but they're doing their best to um, get kids in school more, especially the younger kids, and you're seeing that across the county. Um, but the next issue we're gonna run into is the six foot requirements, because at the six foot requirements, um, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to get more kids into school than are already there. So I really believe that as we go throughout this year, you know, they gotta take a look at that, whether it's the federal government or the state, who, you know, that are sending down these regs, um, of, of, of taking a look at that and finding a way to get kids back in school because uh, from what I can tell, you know, we're heading in the right direction. It's going to warm up, um, at which more people can get outside. Hopefully that rate continues to come down and we can start to get back to normal here this year. And there's been some interesting um, articles and theories out there about, you know, uh, this, this, this upcoming year. And I personally think it's going to be a lot better than people think. But, you know, we still have a lot to do. So the cases are good. Uh, the situation with the vaccine, um, is still wildly frustrating in uh, some ways. Um, the good news is, is that anything we're receiving, we're getting out right away, no problem. Um, we just sent out a, uh, uh, an email to all the people that were on the wait list, just giving them, you know, kind of a, an update and some detail on, on where we're at. I'm just gonna run through that briefly. Uh, but again, just highlighting the fact that, you know, the state dictates how many uh, vaccines we receive, but also who we can vaccinate. So. You know, they've designated pharmacies as 65 plus, and we'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But, um, you know, we've been told basically essential workers, and that's what we need to do. And uh, we're trying to get in, you know, some folks wherever we can, you know, through cancellations or things like that. But, um, you know, we're really, you know, it, it, our hands are tied in a lot of ways from the state of New York. 
Now, you add on top of that a lot of the controversy that's been going on with nursing homes and, um, you know, I thought Charlie Crable had a fantastic column um, in the recorder this weekend about, you know, the mismanagement at the state level as far as, you know, going back to everything from, you know, the reopening and the, and the lockdown um, to testing and now with vaccinations and the miscommunication and the, the difficulty uh, trying to get answers, whether you're an elected official, someone in the public, or even, you know, um, people that are in nonprofits. So um, the, we're expecting right now the supply to increase slightly uh, from what I'm hearing that June is the date or the time frame where you're going to see a, a really big increase in supply. Um, whether that happens or not, uh, we'll see. Um, our latest allotment that I uh, was just made aware of that wasn't included in the numbers, we just got this today, is um, 200 for this week and then 200 for ne next week, which is good, but when you have, you know, many thousands on a wait list, it's, it's, it's not meeting the need. Um, go ahead. And just to interrupt you for one second, so that 200 doses that we are um, scheduled to receive, I just want people to know that 100 doses of that is still allocated to our OPWDD population, our Liberty, our Lexington folks, uh, residents, and staff. And currently we are getting that list together because there are well over 400 people that still need to be vaccinated from yeah. the OPWDD agencies um, who have either moved into that or stepped into a new role, new positions. So we're currently working on that. So out of that 200 that Matt just talked about, 100 is already allocated for a special population. Sarah, could you talk a little bit about, you know, when we say we are told that we have to do essentially workers. Um, could you talk about some of the types of essential workers that we've had uh, come through our doors? Absolutely. So when we get our um, our allocation from the state, and I think Matt, if you just hold up one of the papers, it shows one of, do you have it, the allocation sheet? Well, it says on there um, exactly what our breakdown is. No, I don't have that, with, with that one with us, but it will say, like you said, you know, 100 doses essential workers. Yes, and then in the paragraph above that, it says essential workers for this uh, for this allocation are to be, and it'll say law enforcement, emergency medical personnel, home care givers, licensed practitioner nurses, CNAs, medical professionals, veterinarians, and, and so forth. So it gives us four categories within 1B or 1A that we must target. So when our school personnel came along, for example, we had 200 doses. 100 doses had to be used specifically for school personnel. Janitors, custodians, teachers, cafeteria workers, bus drivers, uh, bus drivers um, uh, folks of that nature. Yeah. So the state is very clear within that essential health care or essential worker status who we have to target for that group. So, and we've been doing that and trying to, you know, wherever we can try to get, um, you know, other folks in. And just so, um, and we'll get to the senior population in a second because I think that's critically important. But, um, you know, prior to this most, uh, the, 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 what was announced today as far as what we were getting, um, you know, the, the vaccines that have come into the county, a, a thousand to public health, uh, Amsterdam Dialysis Center, a hundred, uh, Kinney Drugs in St. Johnsville, 300. Um, the pharmacy that's in the Riverfront Center, uh, 100. Walgreens, 200. And Price Chopper, 100. So everyone out there that is, is trying to look after someone that's 65 plus, or it are, is 65 plus, the two that got them for this week are Price Chopper and um, I believe Kinney's. Yes. So I believe they both got 100. 100. So those are the two that are going to be getting it this week. Um, and you know, you'll see in the email, if you're on the wait list, um, you know, we've been arguing, advocating, fighting, whatever you want to call it, with the state about 65 plus because one of the issues that we feel is a big problem is the registration. And we've been saying that for weeks, as well as access, how quickly they can do it, things of that nature. We're, we're prepared and we think we're the best fit to do that. We did get an interesting email and we're going to have a call this afternoon. Um, Dave Jordan from the uh, Office for the Aging, as well as is included in this is the State Office for the Aging, and basically, you know, trying to link up Office for the Aging with the pharmacies, uh, as well as the county, uh, for anything from helping with registration, sharing information about people that are on wait lists, and I think that's at least a step forward. If you're not going to budge from pharmacies doing 65 plus, there's got to be 
you know, um, steps taken to help people who are not going to download an app. Um, I know for, you know, exa people that I know that are in their 80s and some in their 90s, they're not going to download the app. They're going to need somebody else to do it for them. And the bottom line is some people don't have that person to do it for them. Um, you know, which again, which is why we, you know, have been doing the registrations over the phone and not going the route of the Internet. So we're going to have that call later today. Um, you know, we're really, really concerned about our 65 plus population and want to try to do what we can there. Um, but, um, you know, right now, I mean, we're getting out everything we can. Uh, we have over 6,000 people on our wait list. Um, we sent this out today. I'm sure we're going to get a lot of calls and emails. Um, but um, hopefully this at least provided them of information of where we're at and, um, you know, how to go about uh, moving forward. So if you have someone that's over the age of 65, you know, try to, it's like we've always said, take five, uh, call them, out, check on them, but also see where they're at as far as the vaccination goes because it appears if we keep being told that we can only do essential workers, you know, we have a huge wait list of people and the majority of it is 65 plus. Yes. So that was a mouthful. Um, another topic that I'd like to talk about today, which is a, um, another very encouraging sign that we're moving forward in a good direction, is um, nursing home visitation has been opened up. Um, and, base, and what has been recommended is that visitors take a rapid test before entry into the facility. And Department of Health is going to provide nursing homes uh, tests at no cost. Not the local health department. Not the, the local state, health uh, state department. excuse me. I'm sorry. sorry. No, no. <laughs> um, so that's good. I mean, it's whether it's my professional life, hearing emails uh, and, and phone calls from constituents, I have one particular person that sticks out in my mind, uh, or personal situations. Um, there's a close family friend of, of ours that we've had that just recently passed away in a nursing home and was alone for a good period of uh, the end of his life. And um, it's, it's, it's awful. Um, this hopefully is a good sign that things are going to start heading in a better direction um, and people will be able to have some visitation um, safely, responsibly, but, um, you know, it's, it's, this means a lot. And I think as we get to this year, um, I didn't mean to make you well up. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's hard, Sarah, I know. Um, you know. I really think you know we're going to start to appreciate things a little more as we go forward. And if that's the great lesson of COVID, then God bless, you know. But um, so I'm just really excited. I want to make sure that was out there because I know we've had a lot of calls and emails, and um, you know we've been requesting and talking to the state to ease that uh, because you know you don't want the solution to be worse than the problem. Um, so that's good news. Um, you know I'm sure you know you'll be on the horn with local. Um, nursing homes if they need any help or guidance on that, but um, it seems pretty straightforward to me. Um, just to touch base a little bit about hospitals, um, right now within the region, these are regional numbers, 36% um, of hospital beds are available, 28% um, of ICU beds are available, so, you know, there's no threat to any, you know, restrictions, lockdowns, or anything like that coming. Um, so that's very good news. I think in the entire region, there's 84 people in the ICU. So uh, much better than, you know, where it's been at times. So um, I see, you know, again, there's challenges in front of us related to, um, you know, vaccine rollout, um, you know, school districts dealing with the six feet rule as they try to get more kids back in school. Um, but the bigger picture has gotten a little bit brighter. And, um, you know, I'm really hopeful that, you know, with the warm weather becomes, uh, you know, comes more sense of normalcy. Uh, we can get back to doing some of the things we really enjoy. Um, and just to see, I mean, for me personally, um, I've never, I don't think I felt better about um, a decision that was solely placed on us, even though it was bizarre that it was, um, about the sports, because just to see how much, you know, it was appreciated by the student athletes, the coaches, and the parents. And you know, as we move forward to the next season, uh, we've had some conversations with um, superintendents about um, you know, outside sports and trying to allow some spectators and um, making sure that's done safely. Uh, and also you know, really focusing on also the extracurriculars, the other things that are non-sports um, that you've uh, brought up, and I think importantly so in the past. So um, yeah, it's, uh, I'm actually feeling pretty good about it. and. Um, it's, I'm optimistic. Um, Sheriff, how's things been with you other than I know the good. snowmobile stuff was good, but do you have any other updates for the group before we do any questions? No, we just continue to support the vaccine, the pods that public health is doing with security, and mm -hmm. the pause complaints, there was only three 
last week, mm -hmm. none over the weekend. Great. So, you know, things have been going very well. Yeah, and one other thing about the vaccinations is, uh, uh, you know, we've already now had, you know, three different locations set up, one in Amsterdam that's very accessible, um, the Fonda location, which is great, mid-county, people can pull people from both ways, uh, and the elementary in St. Johnsville, a school in St. Johnsville, and I give you a lot of credit for that because that was your call, um, was a great location. And uh, we're going to be, as we go forward, continuing to use all three of those. Um, and hopefully when that supply number gets larger, um, you know, we'll, we'll be cranking it out. But it's uh, so far so good. But um, yeah, everything else is all right? Yeah, very good. And for us, law enforcement is such a big piece of what we do off-site. So when we're in Amsterdam, our Amsterdam Police Department mm -hmm. helps us a great deal. Um, even simple things, giving people directions on how yeah. to get into the building yeah. or, or going to find somebody who is lost in the building and, and getting them to us. Helping people or, in and out. In and out. And in St. Johnsville, it was wonderful to have an officer right at the door helping people in and out. Um, so our, our partnership with law enforcement through this has just continued to grow, which is very, very yeah, it's been great. Great for us. You know, it's uh, there, like I said, there are some frustrations, but overall, you know, yeah. we're doing the best we can with what we have. So, um, yeah, that's that. I think there's a lot of reason to be, uh, Happy yeah, and, and and have some optimism about the future. You know, it is the as I said, the doldrums of February, but you know, just to know it's a, almost going to be 50 degrees out there. I mean, it feels like almost, you know. I Golf mean, weather? It's been a while. I don't know about that. <laughs> Not this year. But um, <laughs> it's uh, it's going to be a busy year. But, you know, it just, you know, it's just the weather just makes everything, you know, everybody feel a little better. So um, how are we doing our questions today, Morgan? We have some. Okay. Okay. A lot of people still don't trust the vaccine. What is your message to them? Well, I think obviously it's a personal decision. And you got to get to the point of, you know, certain percentages for herd immunity, and that's months from now. What I would say to people is, ultimately, it is a personal decision. No one is required to do it. I personally feel um, it's the right thing to do, and it's going to help us move forward. Um, but, you know, people have to make their own decisions. And, you know, we're trying to set the example um, and do the best we can there. But, um, you know, we'll, I think we'll see. I think when, from what I've seen in the polling, the numbers from people that uh, were hesitant or just not willing to do it have come down. Um, and I think that's a bridge that will be crossed definitely later in the summer as we head to the fall, yeah. talking about next year's flu season. Absolutely. Is that a safe thing to say? Absolutely. So right Absolutely. now, I think, you know, we have more people than we can vaccinate with the supply. So um, thankfully, it's not an issue right now. I think we'll see where, um, you know, the, the uh, community, you know, thoughts are. Um, and, and where people are at, you know, as you get to the summer. Have food pantry volunteers been designated as essential workers yet? I don't know the answer to that. So they could, we could sneak them in under um, food service. So people who are serving meals, we certainly could get them in under the food service category. Um, but and home, people who deliver home meals, we could get them in under the home delivery category. I'm always you know, looking for ways to get people into a category. So if you do work for a food pantry, you do deliver meals for home, um, home food-based programs. I mean, that would make please sense. Please give us a call because we can we can put them into a category. That to me would make sense. Is there testing going on for the new strains of the virus in our county? Being as there has been a new strain of the African one found in Nassau County. That's all done. Um, the, the test results are sent from the labs, and those are analyzed at the state and Correct. federal level. Correct. So um, it's not like you'll have anyone that's coming in with a specific type of test to try to look for that specific variant. What my understanding is they're pulling samples from all over the place and then checking for the variant. Absolutely. See, I do listen, Sarah. That's What if you're 65 plus and have applied online to your office and yep. have not heard a word back yet? Should this person apply or call again? So that's why we sent out the uh, email today um, because, you know, with 6,000 people, there's no way humanly possible that we're going to be able to call every single person. Um, what we can do from here on out is send out email updates. Um, if you have a very specific question, I would say, okay, call the office. Um, but we've been getting a lot of calls of people just kind of checking in. Um, and that's why we tried to answer the questions that we've been getting in the email that went out. 
Um, for those people, the best thing they can do um, is again, try to try all of your options. You, you are on our list. Unfortunately, we've been designated as a, to prioritize essential workers, so that stinks. But I would tell that person, you know, the biggest calls you can make are to those pharmacies and do them probably regularly uh, to try to get in for appointments there. Download the apps if you can't do it. Have a family member do it. Um, and uh, that's, that's your best bet. But hopefully, um, you know, most people will, you know, get the update and understand where we're at. And, um, you know, we're going to do our best I can. But again, you know, at uh, 100 or even 200 a week, I mean, you know, you do the math on how long that'll take you to get through 6,000 people. I don't want people waiting around for uh, our wait list when we have to prioritize essential workers um, and not be pursuing other options. Have any of you received the vaccine yet? And if so, did you have a reaction from it? And how bad was it? And how long did it last? Thank you. Great job, Matt, Sarah, Jeff, and team Montgomery County. Yeah, well, we've seen various reactions. You've had some people that haven't had an issue, and you've had some people that have. There doesn't seem to be a rhyme or reason to it. I know that you have said um, drink water, drink Gatorade. Um, and refrain from alcohol for 24 hours before and 24 hours after. Yeah, so that's the words to live by as far as I've known a ton of people that have gotten it as far as, and, and there's no rhyme or reason. I mean, some people get a reaction, some people don't. I did not, but I just assumed that I soaked yeah, it in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Sheriff. Are you still working off the wait list for people over 65? You guys do a good job updating everyone on staff, but are you actually doing any calling of any people over 65? Every site says, including the counties, if you can get it elsewhere, get it. Problem is, I'm not finding anything or any place elsewhere, including the pharmacies. Continually checking daily, daily, multiple times, calling, et cetera, not blaming, just asking. No, and that's, you know, and that's the frustrating part about it because there just isn't enough to meet what the demand is. So essentially what you have to do is get lucky. And that's why I said today, um, you know, St. Johnsville and um, uh, Price Chopper were the two that are going to be getting them this week. Um, so that's definitely a place to check. Do you know which Price Chopper? So it w might help. Or it no. just store 139. That's all I know. I don't know which one that is. I don't either. Top of my head. Um, but, you know, again, I'd say people just keep trying. Um, it is frustrating. We're frustrated. Um, and, yeah, I mean, we're working off the list. But, again, you know, if you get 100 vaccine and you have to prioritize, you know, the Amsterdam Police Department and sanitation workers or Liberty, and, you know, it doesn't leave a lot left over. So if you're only knocking off in that week 10 people, um, that are on your wait list, it's, 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 it's hard. So that's why, you know, just out of a compassionate side, you know, don't sit around just waiting on us. We're one option. Right. There's multiple options. And if you have, especially for the seniors, and I've seen this and heard this time and time again, Sheriff, you've probably heard this too, of people who, their children or their grandchildren are, are on the, um, uh, what is it, the I am eligible website and finding lo locations and then bringing their seniors uh, their aunt, their uncle, their grandfather, their grandmother to the, the thing. So and a lot of people have traveled to Utica and Albany yeah. and places oh, farther, Oriana. farther, yeah. So um, Plattsburgh. Yes, I was just going to say that. Um, so that's um, you know, and then hopefully as we get towards the end or as we go forward, we'll be able to take those people off the list and focus on the people that haven't had that chance. And that's where I think the county really comes in is because we're there to provide that compassionate service as far as registration, possibly transportation, you know, uh, and all those things to help out. Um, and Matt and, and Jeff and I have had this conversation about, I get very frustrated when I hear that our Montgomery County residents are traveling two hours, three hours away. And I have said to both yeah. of you, I don't want Montgomery County residents being handled in other counties because they're they're my people, they're yeah. our people. And they live here, they should be getting served here. But we just don't have the vaccine supply to give to our own people. And, yeah. and that's the frustrating piece of all of this. And I've actually, you know, I've heard that it's gonna get better, but just we're just not there yet now, so. Um, do you know which of our local nursing homes are ready to accept visitors? I mean, these regs just came out yeah. in, in the governor's typical fashion, I believe, on a Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon. Um, I don't know, but I would say call. Um, you know, give a call. Say, you, you know, don't waste any time because I'm sure there's going to be 
a there lot has of people... to be a reopening plan in place. Part okay. of there, there has to be some reopening plans in place. Um, and again, if this is just dropped on us on Friday afternoon, today's yeah. Monday, uh, yeah. there, there is some planning that needs to go along with and, it. For and that expect time. that you're going to have to take a rapid on the way in. Um, yeah, let's hope the rapid test capability doesn't take as long as the vaccine. Yeah, exactly. Well, thankfully, from what I understand in my conversations, um, you know, with Sarah and uh, folks in the nursing homes and people that work there, is that the rapid testing has been pretty consistent. Um, you know, as soon as there's any issue, that they deploy that rapid testing and try to and keep rapid testing until you know there's there's no positive cases. So, uh, but the challenge you've had with the rapids is they, they can be unreliable at times, but it's better than nothing and just waiting a few days. So, um, I would say just call the nursing home, ask them if they got the reopening plan done and when they're going to start accepting visitors. But the good news is is and the, I think the challenge has always been is the states. Uh, uh, you know, has prohibited it, and now that, that has been lifted. If seniors don't have a computer to register for, the va register for the vaccine, how do they hear your online weekly update? So we've been trying to get it on the radio. We just did the state of the county last week and put that on the radio. Um, and uh, so, you know, try to tune into WCSS. Um, the newspaper. Newspapers, we try to get everything yeah, out there. We're asking family and friends yes. to help us with that. You know, they have to reach out to their grandkids have to reach out to their grandparents or aunts and uncles or moms and dads and mm -hmm. neighbors friends you know they, they have to help spread that word that's part of yeah. you know the communication that process. was one of my messages um, in the state of the county is government is not the answer it's a big piece but there's also a community portion of this that's why we talked about the take five initiative and checking in on people it's the nonprofits it's the call we're gonna have with the state the office for the aging the county um, you know it's private sector partners like price chopper Kinney's um, it's a whole host of, of entities, school districts, I mean, you know, daycare centers. I mean, it's, everybody's got to do their part, and that's, that's the solution. With our numbers low, why can't we just social distance and ease up on the mask? You wear a mask to go in a restaurant and take it off when you sit. It just doesn't make sense. There's a lot of things that are counterintuitive, and my hope is, and we had this talk this morning, um, that you know we can get to March and we can get as back to normal as humanly possible and I think you know it, that's got to start happening whether you're talking about dining schools I mean there's only so much we can do about you know the regs that come from the state um, it's gonna be what it's gonna be I think the mask wearing is probably here to stay I know I mean I get it too it just you know you get up you put it on to go to the bathroom you come back you take it off and you know, it's, uh, I'll leave that to the public health experts as far as, you know, why that is still, you know, in, in, in effect. I think, you know, while I think things are getting better, it's also important not to, um, you know, we don't want to go back, you know, and just, I mean, we're sitting here at the 22nd day of February and just in the beginning of January, we were at almost 400 cases a week and it was not a good situation. So, um, you know, I actually had an interesting conversation with the, um, Superintendent of Kanja Harry this morning, um, actually we were talking about wrestling, and um, he brought up the fact that there was a, a, an interesting article out there when you add in the people that have been vaccinated, you add in the low positivity rates, you add in um, you know, the amount of people that probably had it uh, that didn't even know they had it, and you start at, you know, combining that together, we might be in for a better year than what some have predicted. Um, that's my hope. Um, but I think I think the mask wearing is going to be here for the foreseeable future. Would you agree? I agree, I, and that's I'm glad you brought that up because I've gotten a lot of questions um, from people who have become vac vaccinated. They've gotten their second dose. It's 14 days after, and they say, "Well, now that I'm fully vaccinated, I don't need to wear my mask anymore." And yeah. you know, I will say this in front of the sheriff because this is the law enforcement piece, yeah. right? The executive order that's in place that you must wear a mask or the orders that are in place that you must wear a mask to go into businesses is not negated just because you're vaccinated. So Correct. your vaccine status does not negate any of the orders or the executive um, procedures that are in place such as the travel quarantine or mm -hmm. wearing a mask or social distancing. And hopefully, again, some of this stuff can be lifted and, and eased I think the community in general needs it, um, but at the same time, I don't foresee mask wearing. And for me personally, it's just become habit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I almost forget I'm doing it because it's just it's just been that way. But for Sarah, from a mental health standpoint, how have the bizarre conspiracy theories such as QAnon affected your work to get out factual scientific information, and how are they gaining such a foothold? 
It's an interesting question. I don't know what what's what is it? QAnon? That's a it's a political group that's been associated with some of the um, stuff that's happened on the federal level. But there's okay. basically the call the, the the commenters just saying you know has a lot of the conspiracy style information or things that rumors that are out there has okay. that impacted you from a public health perspective? From, from a mental health perspective, absolutely. Um, you know, we've seen a very large increase in the need for mental health services, people calling the crisis hotline, people calling me directly asking for services because they are terrified of what is happening in, in the world, not just in the local area, but people are very much in a state where they're nervous. And I always say the definition of anxiety is a constant and persistent fear of an unknown factor. And for folks who suffer with anxiety or depression, that fear is very real for them. Mm -hmm. And it has increased. And people want to know why this is happening, what is happening, what is the outcome. And so for us, uh, you know, as a, as a mental health provider and on the behavioral health side, we've seen an increase in people's just overall anxiety. And I believe, in my clinical opinion, those conspiracy theories or some of those thoughts come from people just need an answer. And, and it's not necessarily a right answer, a wrong answer, a good answer, it's just something. And people will hold on to something that feels comfortable to them. Because again, that anxiety is a definition of a constant and persistent fear of unknown. So if they feel that they know an answer, then they may hold on to that. For the record, you have told that advice to me a few times I have, along yes. the way. Um, but I would say this, um, probably one of the nicer things that anyone has ever said to us um, was at one of our vaccine clinics when a woman came to me and said, at a time where there's so much information out there, I have come to rely on your briefing so because I feel like I can trust the information you're telling us. Absolutely. And um, that, I mean, that meant the world to me and I just think speaks to um, the way you've handled yourself because people have grown to understand that we're here, we're not trying to you know, manipulate or get our personal opinions out there or, or anything like that. This is just here are the facts, this is what's going on, and you can rely on what it is. It's local information for local people. So um, that's, I think, the best thing we can do to combat that. I mean, we live in a world now with social media where a lot of times people will formulate their opinion and then look for the facts to back that up, whether it's, you know, you see it on all sides. Um, it's not any one, you know, party or region or person has a monopoly on that. That's just the world we're living in. Um, so I would always tell people to, you know, read multiple outlets, try to focus on trusted sources, and if you're looking for local information, this is a great place to get it because you don't have to deal with any of that. But I know certainly, I mean, think about, I mean, I just have heard the things that people have said to the nurses when they're making phone calls. Yeah. I mean, some of the stuff is just, you know, um, very difficult to swallow, I guess. But anyway. I'm 68 and I'm scheduled for my second shot this Thursday in Fonda. Will I, will I receive it if I have an appointment? Yeah, yep, we're scheduled. And, um, you know, a lot of people have asked about the weather. Last week on Friday we had a snowstorm and there was snow and not one person missed their, their appointment. We are telling people that if you have an appointment, let's say, for example, at 11 and you need to get there a few minutes early or a half hour early because of weather or you're late, um, you know, just give us a call and say, I'm struggling to get there because of weather. We'll hold your spot for you. Um, but I always have said, you know, if you are somebody uh, over the age of 40 like I am and you've lived here your entire life, plan for the weather because yeah. we, we need to at this point. It's, as Matt said, it's the conundrum of yeah. February. It could be 50 or it could be 50 feet of snow. I actually was made aware of a, quite a situation where someone had an appointment, um, but like we've said, it tried to get multiple appointments um, and then actually had another appointment scheduled. Um, so when they got their first appointment, um, they canceled the other one. Mm -hmm. Or when they, you know, so, but then because of the delay, they lost the appointment that they had. Oh. And then it was going back to rescheduling, you know, because of all that. So, I mean, the twists and turns that this process has taken. And uh, thankfully, in that situation, everything had worked out. But, um, yeah, I got a lot of calls about delayed and yep. rescheduling. And I even had one call about uh, Price Chopper was not going to be rescheduling people that were canceled. Um, you know, we had some talks about that. But um, never a dull moment. Do you know what the vaccination rate is in our local nursing homes? I've seen the state reporting up to 90% of state nursing home residents have received the vaccination. Then they change it to 60%. 
We did have those numbers a couple of weeks ago. So we were going through, um, basically everyone was starting to vaccinate from the beginning of January in the nursing homes to the beginning of February. And the way that's done, just so everybody is aware, uh, and we talked about it at some of the previous briefings, is nursing home vaccination is directly contracted with the federal government and the far local pharmacies. And the way they were doing it is they were doing it a third of the facility at a time. Mm -hmm. um, and that all has begun is, and is in the process. Because of the way it was staggered and not all of them started at the same time, because again, the scheduling and the contracting with both the federal government as well as the pharmacies, um, they are going to be at staggered states of vaccination. Um, and I think the nursing homes were a little bit more on the front end and the assisted livings were more on the back end, the Sarah, Sarah Jane Stanford home, um, the Sentinel, yeah. yeah. So um, I, I don't know what the percentage is and we can get an update on that maybe potentially for next week. Sure. Um, but um, we do know that it was well underway um, and, uh, and I've heard and talked to many people that have received them, both residents and um, staff and uh, that process is continuing to move forward. Yeah, I can get those for next week, absolutely. Any updates on wrestling? Our school is just waiting for the okay from you. All of our neighboring districts are participating in other counties. Yeah, so that was actually what my talk was with the superintendent of Kennedy Harry this morning and the timing is a challenge right now as well as the, the with our rate, but the problem even if um, we did get it going, there's not many people to wrestle because I don't know that any other schools in Montgomery County are going to participate and it's at towards the end of the season. It's, uh, it's, it's a tough one, it's frustrating. Um, and um, you know, we're at almost that percentage point right now, but I, I believe, I think the, the comment uh, from the superintendent was that they may even only be able to get one or two matches in at that point, and it just might not be feasible. I know that's probably not, and I have a feeling I know who that is, um, what that person wants to hear. And um, uh, from what I understand, that person's child is one heck of a wrestler um, it's it's sad and it's frustrating um, I don't know that it's gonna happen um, but um, I wish I had better news on that front I really do it's it's not something I enjoy uh, giving out the bad news it doesn't look like it's gonna happen this year um, and I even asked about well could there be any delays and then that runs into other sports and it's something the superintendents and I have talked about um, you know and uh, it's just we're running out of time that's the problem how many documented COVID-19 cases in total have we had in Montgomery County? We were at, it's just over 3,000. It's just over 3,000. Thankfully, I, not I a ton over 3,000 with only 107 this week. Right. Um, okay, I can look. The, uh, yeah, I think I don't have that one with us. Because I, it's, yeah. the total number is, you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's just over 3,000. I know that. But going back, you know, I mean, it's, it's, a majority of those cases have come in the last, you know, this, this winter right. and end of the fall. The good news is only 107 this week, which is one of the best weeks we've had in a long, long time. Kind of exact, I just was uh, texting to try to figure out the store and, and that price drop was Amsterdam. Oh, good, so okay. That would so help it, people clarify. So you got one on each end of the county as yeah. far as pharmacies this week, Amsterdam, Price Chopper, and Kinney's in St. Johnsville. I mean, we're going to do our best when it comes to the 65 plus and the seniors as far as, you know, if they need people and, you know, we're more than happy to share our wait list and, you know, uh, the, the information that we have. I think we're all set. We're all set. All right. Well, this was more of an uplifting, a uh, little bit better of a briefing this week. Is Sheriff, uh, any parting words? What do you got going on? I'm just counting on your enthusiasm. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm I, trying. Uh, I'm definitely I, feeling better about things this week. I got to tell you, Sheriff, it's... You know, it, it, just like the community, it's been an ebb and flow. And then sometimes it just, especially now that you get towards the end of the winter, it's cold and just been wearing on you. But I got to tell you, the, the news that I've been getting today, the news that I've been getting at the end of the last week has really given me a lot more hope and a lot more optimism. Well, we just continue to support public health and, and, and our communities during this process. And I encourage anyone that needs anything from us to reach out. We've made it almost a complete full year. A yeah. couple weeks will be well, even here. you know I know a lot of the jails in the state have had issues and you know obviously but um, you we've know. had staff uh, you know but all the staff have, have recovered which is a good sign and they've done a tremendous job and so far we have not had one in me and that's that's the goal that we exactly continue to uh, yeah well and I think done. also you know we've we've really looked at you know when to tighten up and when to loosen up and I think you've made some really good decisions there 
Um, our, so today is day 345, and we've had 3,095 total positive cases in 345 days. So, and we had, yeah. um, this week was 107. 107. So. so even though, you know, we're having a good week, I just, and we're feeling a little bit better, let's also remind people this is, you know, not the time to, you know, have 50 people over yeah. and, uh, you know, still try to keep your gatherings small, still follow the protocols, um, and that'll be... The best possible best thing we can do moving forward not let our guard down and for me um, I just want to remind people to that this is the last week of um, the February go red campaign mm -hmm. for um, heart health month so just reminding people if you can exercise a few minutes a day drink water um, you know get your get your yearly physical yeah, we need to share for a really big exercise <laughs> Every I, day. I, I, I looked that way. Just because it looks like this Together. every day. <laughs> so just remember heart health is very important in, in the month of February as well as all year long. But uh, our Go Red campaign continues. All righty. Well, thank you everyone for tuning in and please share and get the, you know, help your neighbor take five, help your family members, you know, do what you can, be part of the solution. And um, we appreciate you tuning in and hopefully um, we'll have a quiet week and maybe next week we'll be under 100 cases. Hope so. That's the hope. So everybody take care, be well, and uh, we'll see you soon.